Sam Sulik isn't just another gym bro. He's a fitness and bodybuilding icon. As a personal trainer and strength coach, I've dove deep into his latest videos and extracted five golden nuggets of wisdom that can help you transform your training. And stick with me until the end for not just a bonus tip, but a simple yet profound tweak that both Sam and you can apply to elevate your training even further beyond. Now, let's dive into golden nugget number one, and that is train heavy in all phases. So currently it's spring and Sam is on a cutting phase. And as we can see, he's still training really hard. I think that some people think that just because you're losing weight, you shouldn't train as hard for some reason, but you're literally losing body weight and some of that may be muscle mass. And to counteract that, we need to train hard. It's like as you're losing, you're losing both fat, carbs and protein. If you're doing it in a really ideal way, you'll probably just mostly be losing fat, but inevitably you're probably going to lose a little bit of muscle mass as well. So by training really heavy and high volumes on a cutting cycle, that kind of counteracts that kind of counterbalances to help you maintain or maybe even grow some muscle mass, depending on where you're at in your fitness journey. And a little side nugget here. This is one of my favorite videos of Sam squatting because he's using a Smith machine, which I really like. If you've never tried Smith machine squats before, definitely give them a shot. There's some really unique tweaks that you can do as compared to like doing a barbell squat. Like for instance, you can move your feet slightly forward and get more quad focus. Another thing that he's doing is he's putting his feet really close together and he's going full depth. So he's getting a really good stretch in those quads and the glutes. So this is a really good technique. If you're going to do Smith's machine squats, doing it something like this for quad focus is a really good idea. The only thing that I might tweak just a little bit is I never like getting in the Smith machine rack like that, where it's kind of like facing backwards and you have to pull it forward to unrack it, but it kind of makes sense that he's doing it that way because he wants to face himself in the mirror, which is totally fine. I just preferred unlocking it the other way. And that leads us into golden nugget number two, mentality. There's nothing in the world that can make you upset. There's nothing in the world that can put you in a bad mood. There are just things that happen all around you. And then it's kind of up to you to let them upset your internal zen. That's so true. And the mentality that we want to bring into working out is we want it to be really intense while we're doing the workout, but it can burn so much energy that we don't want to waste that by having a lot of daily stressors. Now he has a very stoic approach to this where we really shouldn't let our circumstances dictate what's going on inside of us. Now, naturally that's going to happen depending on the phase of life that you're in. But if we're talking about like little daily stressors, like what to wear, what to eat, you know, what someone said or didn't say or something like that as long as it's nothing like huge we shouldn't really let that affect our energy levels I've heard it said that if you put happiness in a pie chart something like 50% is genetic 40% is your focus and only 10% should be your circumstances so if a lot of it happens to be our focus we can change that that's something that we can totally change. And I really agree with Sam here, and I think that's great. And this is also a really good way to set up your training to be very optimal. You wanna go into your training relaxed, but pumped up mentally, right? Like you wanna be relaxed from the day, you wanna relax from your last training session so that you can adapt and recover. Now, one quick side note I wanna make here before we get into golden nugget number three, is in general, just because someone's huge or jacked doesn't mean that they always have great advice. It's not that hard for me to give him the wrong advices. So always be on the lookout for people just giving like crazy advice. If it seems really out there, then it probably is. And it may not be the best advice for you in your specific situation. But on the other hand, I think a lot of people are quick to disregard someone just because of their age or because of gear usage. I see so many people in comments saying that, well, he got jacked just because he was on gear. Well, this person got this big just because he took steroids. Yes, that helps. It's a supplement, but that's not all there is to it. You can't just take it and get super jacked. Getting muscle mass and being lean is a process that takes years of hard work and dedication. And whatever you think about gear use, which I don't recommend for most people, it shouldn't change your perspective on the individual as a person. There's plenty of brilliant people out there that are on gear. Like I said, I don't recommend it for most people, but don't let that hold you back from getting advice from some brilliant people. In fact, one of my old mentors is very open about his gear usage, and he's a huge YouTuber that has some great fitness advice. And if you wanna see a breakdown of more of Sam's workouts in greater detail with some of the things that he could be doing better, then check out this video from him him, Dr. Mike Isertel. And I guarantee you're really going to like his content and get a lot of laughs out of it. Now, on to golden nugget number three. Your training doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to train hard. It's the fact that you can do a lot of different stuff and it'll still probably work 
to work. Not even probably, like it will still be conducive to gains. Now that doesn't always look like you're absolutely killing yourself at the gym. In fact, we have dedicated deload weeks to make sure you're actually not doing that and that your body's getting ample time to recover and adapt. But to get to that point to where you need time to recover and adapt, you need to train hard. And so what that typically looks like when I'm structuring a program for a client is about four to six weeks of training accumulation. So that means like you start with week one and it's a pretty good amount of volume and then you intensify it each week. You add more sets, you add more reps, you add more weight, whatever it may be until you have a peak week where you're just going all out like balls to the wall, like as hard as you can go. And then after that, you deload, recover, and then repeat. That is how you do a training plan. You do mesocycle to mesocycle with one big macro cycle goal in mind. So that might be losing weight, gaining muscle, growing specific body parts or whatever. Another little minor nugget with this video is that Sam hits his back from several different angles. This is something that bodybuilders have known for a long time. Yes, you're technically working the full muscle whenever you do, like let's say a bicep curl, whenever you're doing a dumbbell standing bicep curl, you're technically working the whole muscle whenever you do that, but you can emphasize different parts of the muscle by focusing on different exercises. And that's because you're hitting different neural pathways that go to different parts of the muscle. So I really like that about his training here. And then side note, have you guys ever thought about his Bob Ross energy? Like take a look at this clip right here. Plan for tomorrow, arms, just a happy day. Just a nice little freaking day. Maybe I'll throw forearms in as well. Dude, if that doesn't scream Bob Ross energy, then I, I don't know what will. But I, I really like it. He's kind of, I kind of see him as like the Bob Ross of fitness right now. Side note, if you made it this far in the video, chances are you're really enjoying it. Feel free to like and subscribe as it really helps out the channel and I really appreciate it. This leads us into golden nugget number four, which is the tool is only as useful as the person using it. Sam makes a really valid point in this video talking about how tools are only as useful as the people that know how to use them. A tool is only as useful as how skillful the user's hands are. So what he says is like, no matter what gym you go to, if you can't get a good workout at a Planet Fitness, you're not gonna be able to get a good workout at a Gold's Gym. I think even take that a step further back. If you can't get a good workout from home with no equipment at all, then that means you probably need to learn more. So like, how do you get a good chest pump at home? Well, push-ups are a really great way to start. If they're too easy for you, if you can bust out like 50 in a row and that's too easy for you, then add weight, add like a weighted backpack. Maybe do deficit push-ups, have your hands on some plates or some yoga blocks or chairs or whatever it may be. You should know how to get a really good workout with barely any equipment at all. You just really need to know the muscles that you're trying to work and what they do. So for instance, if you're trying to hit your biceps, you know that you have to do a curl with your arm. You have to contract and extend the arm. Now there's only one way that the arm will move like that, but there's several different methods you can apply to make it happen. For instance, you could do a dumbbell curl or you could do a cable curl or a machine curl. Whichever way you decide to do it, you're still doing a curl and you still have to know how that muscle works to contract and extend the arm. And that goes for all body parts. So knowledge in using your tools is key. And another little side nugget in this video is I love how Sam is doing supersets with the triceps and with the biceps. If you're stripped for time and you really need to get a quick workout in, try implementing supersets. Another thing about the way he's doing his triceps is he's getting a full range of motion and then he's kind of finishing off with some partial reps and he's doing it right. He's doing it very correct here. So they may look kind of like ego gym bro kind of sets and stuff. And Sam definitely does some of that in his training. However, this is not one right here. I don't know if he's doing this on purpose or not, but this is what I would call an integrated partial, which means that he's still working the muscle at the lengthened position. And for the triceps, the lengthened position is when your arm is bent right? So he's still getting some really good quality partials in at the end. So if you've never tried integrated partials, make sure to try that into your routine. And this leads us into our fifth golden nugget from Sam Sulik, which is take a rest day if you need it. You know what else happened yesterday was not a lift because I had legs scheduled for yesterday and I could tell my quads were still kind of wrecked from the squats primarily on the last leg day. So executive decision, it would be better to save legs for today. If you need a rest day, take one. That's always been my stance. In this video, he points out how if you need a rest day, you should definitely take it. I would go a step even further beyond and I would actually implement rest days where you need them. So for instance, if you're gonna be working out five days in a row, there's a good chance that you might need a rest day on that sixth day or sixth and seventh day. It depends on how intense you're working and how much volume you're doing. So for me, I do eight sessions a week, four lifting and four cardio. And I leave Sundays totally off. I barely get any steps on that day. I just use it as a full day to just totally recover and get 
get ready for the next week. That's a day that I need, but I have it structured into my routine because I know I'm gonna need it in advance. So when thinking about your routine, how can you implement rest days to really benefit your training? Remember, rest days aren't you being weak. They're a sign that you need to recover from all of your hard training. Training is very simple. It's you give your body a big stimulus, you need to recover from it, and then your body adapts, and then you repeat. That's all training ever is. So the way that you recover, one of the biggest parts of that is by resting. And the biggest components of resting are having off days when you need them, sleeping a lot, and eating a lot. If you do those three things really well, then you'll definitely recover for your next session. Now, before I get into a really important tweak that I think Sam can make in his training routine and that you could too, let's go over a bonus golden nugget of truth that Sam gives us. Time for the part that actually gets you the gains. Long-term, consistent gym sessions. Both of those, I'd say, are probably equally important. The long-term and the consistent. So what he's saying is that we need to be training hard and not just hard, but over the long term. So many people think that they're going to see crazy gains in just a few weeks or even a few months when it really takes years sometimes, depending on what your goals are. And that's OK. The best things in life are worth waiting for and worth working hard for. I've personally been training for 20 years. Now, it doesn't mean I've had the same goal the whole time. I've had different goals. I went from a power lifter to a football player to a bodybuilder to running a marathon and back and forth and back and forth. And that's what's so great about fitness and health. There's so many different goals that you can have. So once you lose your weight or once you gain your muscle, set your mind on new goals. That's going to be a lifestyle that you're going to have to implement. And that's totally fine. You have to learn to do things that you love. And that's what's going to keep you going in the gym moving forward. And side note, I, I don't even know I'm wearing this thing. Like it's not even on. I just, you know, I just wanted to be like Sam, I guess, for a little bit. This is the mic I'm actually using. So here's the tweak that I would like to see Sam make. I would like to see his routine be a little bit more structured. He definitely has an overall structure, like he knows that he's on a gaining cycle or he knows that he's cutting. He knows that he's gonna do arms today or that he's gonna do legs. But a lot of times he kind of goes in and goes by feel. And I actually don't mind that approach. I actually really like it. I like the looseness of the approach because sometimes you go into the gym and your machines are taken or you might have to improv just a little bit. And that's totally fine. But what I would encourage him and you to do is be a little bit more more structured even than that in your training. And so what that can look like is what I talked about earlier, creating full mesocycles of training. Now it doesn't have to be overly complicated or anything. Basically what he can do is just take in what he's doing already, put that into week one, and then do the same things in week two, then week three, then week four, and just make sure he's increasing in volume and intensity each week and then deloading from there. So same thing with you, whenever you're creating a new mesocycle, split up your weeks by days that you're gonna train, like so let's say, upper body, lower body, upper body, lower body. And then within those days, put in a balanced exercise routine emphasizing whatever you want to emphasize. So if you want to grow your chest, put in more sets on your chest than you would on your biceps, for instance. And then you can either focus on the same thing the next mesocycle or focus on something completely different. And that's what I mean by being just a little bit more structured. I think if Sam were to do this, he would see even better gains than he's already seen, which is obviously already pretty impressive. But it's worked with athletes and bodybuilders for years, and it will work for you as well. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what your favorite golden nugget from Sam was in the comments down below, and I will catch you in the next video.